Of course, the popular podcast Decoder Ring is all about cracking cultural mysteries like why are lawn ornaments so popular and is Parmesan cheese authentic Italian? The host, Willa Paskin, examines the history of a cultural question, object, or habit and tries to figure out what it means and why it matters. And Willa joins us this morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Let's take a look at some of these. We mentioned lawn ornaments. What is the backstory on lawn ornaments? Well, each lawn ornament has a different backstory. We did episodes about three different lawn ornaments. Uh, one is the gnome, which is a classic. Uh, one is um, sort of the more controversial lawn ornament, which is like the lawn jockey. And then we also did a sort of uh, odd segment about a very, very long history of actually putting people in your yard as lawn ornaments in the 17th and 18th century as like hermits. Huh. Um, yeah. So, so then what's the story on, on the gnomes? And I know the, the one about the lawn jockeys is a, is a bit racist, I believe, if I recall. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, yeah, so the gnomes go back, actually, like it, it's sort of to uh, the Middle Ages in, in Europe and all, there's all these stories about little folk, like different kinds of fairies and dwarves, sort of every different culture has one. And in Germany in particular, they had these gnomes that wear that actually red hat to keep their head from getting bopped on um, when they're in the mines. Mm. And essentially it went over to England, um, like tourists in, like, in the 1800s brought it over. They were sort of very expensive, like extravagantly made these oh. ceramic gnomes. Um, and they kind of went out of style. And then of course, Snow White, brought them back yeah. in the 1940s and then they could be plastic and then they ended up everywhere and now people fight about whether they're schlocky or not um, <laughs> even though they sort of started as this uh very expensive sort of like fancy huh. item yeah let's talk about sitting uh it, it mentioned in the where we're looking at the information about like you know slouching was something and now sitting is it bad for you it has become a, a big question yeah do you worry about sitting i worry about sitting yeah 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 i do <laughs> too much sitting yeah yeah, exactly. So, I mean, there's been all these studies that have come out about how basically much we all sit now. Like, you know, I think sort of the statistics are insane, like office workers. Are, it's not just office workers, right? Because we're just all on our computers all day. You know, we're sitting for 9, 10, 12 hours a day and how bad that is for your body. But um, we did an episode sort of that was about like the history of that concern, because even though there's all these new studies about it, we've been worried about sitting for a really long time. We were like, our worry is basically never change. We're always worried about something. Um, and so we sort of looked at the history of slouching, which obviously is not sitting, it's like slouching, but it's, um, it's adjacent and sort of in the early 1900s in America, there was like a huge, huge concern that we were not like standing erect. And, yeah. and this idea that not doing it was actually really, really bad for your health. So there's all these echoes with sitting because obviously I think now we might all say like slouching is not super attractive, but I don't think we're worried that it's like going to give us tuberculosis or some <laughs> yeah. other fatal disease. Yeah. And we were, you know, and it actually yeah. affected all this stuff. Like kids come from there, ergonomic chairs, uh, lots of different yoga, like caught on at that right. point. So there's lots of different things that come from that as there are right now like the concern about sitting is obviously um, manifesting in tons and tons of things you can buy so that you don't, you know, so that when you're sitting, it doesn't hurt or it's not as bad for you. And so we're just sort of looking at that echo. And what about stuffed animals? I don't know if it started with the teddy bear, but it seems like every few years uh, there's a new trend with a new animal. Yeah. So I have two little kids and um, I have no, I had stuffed animals when I grew up too. And I have noticed that they've gotten like stranger. Like that was just an axolotl that you showed, which is an animal I definitely didn't even know about as a child. Um, and it's really, really popular. It's everywhere. Like it was just the um, mascot of like the Girl Scout cookies last year. And there's tons and tons of t-shirts and stuffed animals. And so I wanted to sort of think about why that was why have stuffed animals gotten weirder and they really have like squishmallows which is this hugely hugely popular mm. stuffed animal line not only do they make axolotls like they make gouda cheese they make capybaras i mean it's really uh esoteric animals are really in and we wanted to think about why that was and if there was actually just a connection to those animals sort of being endangered and our and our sort of a growing awareness of those of animals that are endangered that are sort of like exotic depending on where you live but know about more because they're we talk about them all the time and also if there was sort of a connection to um kids names and like this which have also gotten stranger uh, mm -hmm. or not stranger just certainly more varied and if there's some instinct that parents have that they want something really unique for their children, whether it's an axolotl or uh, a name that they've mm -hmm. created from scratch. I think we all remember slow dancing in high school at different dances, but it, does that go on anymore? 
Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what we wanted to know. So we did an episode about slow dancing, like, because anecdotally, uh, we had heard that kids don't do it anymore. There'd been a really big piece in Billboard about it. And so we were like, what has happened here? I think, by the way, kids don't do it very much anymore. I think that it probably depends where your school is, where your high school is, how many dances you're having. Uh, you know, probably it happens some places, but certainly it's on the decline. Um, and it, I think it's one of those things that for people of my age or older or even a little younger, like you have a lot of memories, you have a lot of nostalgia around the awkwardness of the slow yeah. dance, <laughs> but sure. I don't know that it was actually like, while it was happening, like a great experience. So, yeah. I don't, so it's possible it's okay that it's going away, but you know, they're doing other kinds of dancing. Um, and, and the piece was sort of thinking about like what kind of function the slow dance serves. Cause I think the slow dance, you know, back in the fifties and the sixties and earlier, it was kind of, or even when it was the waltz, it was very risque. It was like you were sort of being naughty. Right. And that it doesn't have that feeling at all anymore. Now grown-ups are kind of like, oh, that's so sweet, do a slow dance. So if you're a kid and you're trying to figure out how to rebel, a slow dance isn't gonna do the trick anymore. You gotta find something else. <laughs> well, great. Check out the Dakota Ring podcast at slate.com and follow Willa on X. Willa, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good morning. <laughs>